All right, let's go ahead and look at how you can earn your OneNote badges. This is going to be a series of videos, some of them made by me, but a good bit of them we're going to link to other videos that are already out there that are much better than anything I could put together. But to start with, level one for the OneNote is again going to be a summary of what you've seen from the, or what you've learned from the videos, and uh, how you think that you might be able to use this in class. Level two is going to be you sharing a notebook that you've created, preferably one maybe that you work with your PLC group on. And then the level three will be a notebook that you work with students on. Now you have some options on which types of notebooks you might want to use. So I'm going to start by explaining the difference between the different notebooks, the online version and the desktop version, and then the uh, what I refer to as a basic and the dynamic. The dynamic is really what's called the class creator notebook. All right, so what I've done here is I've opened a basic notebook, or what I refer to as a basic notebook. You essentially have to share it either with full edit access or view only access. So this is kind of an all or nothing notebook. If I was working with other teachers in my PLC group, this would be the notebook that I would probably use because there really isn't a need to have private spaces for each individual person. Now with that said, if I'm working with students, I would use the class creator notebook, and we'll look at that here in a few minutes. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to compare the online versus the desktop versions. So what you see here on the left on top is the OneNote online. Now again, I can tell that because I've got it listed right here in the upper left hand corner. But it looks a little bit different than what you see in the desktop version, which is here on the right. So in the desktop version now, you notice that I've got some tabs across the top of the page here. Well, that corresponds with the tabs that I see over here on the far left in the desktop version, or I'm sorry, in the online version. So in the online version, my tabs all run along the left side. In the desktop version, on the right side of my screen here, they all run across the top row. My pages then, in the online version, over here on the left, these are the pages. And over here on the right side of the screen, these are the pages in my desktop version. So again, I'm kind of toggling back and forth here between two different looks. But this is the full-blown version of, of OneNote that's living on my computer. And this over here on the left side is basically living in the cloud. It's living in my OneDrive for business. When I open it here also, it is now opened in a web browser, as you can tell. So that's going to be the looks and the difference of the looks between the online and the desktop version. The way the page is laid out is going to be the same on both uh, versions of it, whether it be the desktop or online. Now when you're in the online version, you always have the option here of clicking this Edit Notebook, and you can either edit it in OneNote, which is going to be your desktop, or edit it in OneNote Online, which of course will be here in the online component. All right, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and compare the Dynamic Notebook or the Class Creator Notebook more officially and the basic notebook, but I'm going to compare both of those in the desktop version. I prefer to work in the desktop version of OneNote. I don't spend hardly any time in the online component of it because it's much easier to work and, and work dynamically, meaning I can share pages, I can move pages from one notebook to another, and all kinds of really powerful things when I'm in the desktop version. I'm very limited to do some of those things without having to uh, have several clicks in the online component. So right now you see what I'm referring to as our basic notebook. And by this, all of the different tabs that you see here on the top row, if I was to share this notebook with somebody, they would have access to seeing all of that. If I shared it as view only, all they would be able to do is see it. If I shared it as edit only or as edit access, they would be able to come in here and, and mess with my notebook and change things, change out the tabs, all kinds of things like that. So that's why I say this is not the notebook I would share with students. I don't want my students changing up my notebook. I want to keep uniformity to it. But if I'm working with fellow teachers, this would be a way for me to be able to just share a notebook that we all know what we're doing and we're comfortable working in and out and we're going to go ahead and update information and we trust who we're sharing the notebook with. If I'm just creating a personal notebook for myself to use for whatever reason, like my project management notebook that I have here, well then at that point, I just do the basic notebook. There's no reason to create the, the more dynamic one. So let's take a look at the dynamic notebook then. And in the dynamic notebook, you'll notice you'll have a collaboration space. And inside that collaboration space, you have other things that are available also. So in this or collaboration space, I have more tabs. 
and I also have more pages within each of those tabs. This is the space that would then be like having a regular notebook where everybody could share it. The collaboration space is wide open. Anything that you put in here is editable by anybody that's included in this notebook. So this would be a space for you if you have students working in groups and they all have access in their own spots within this notebook, they could actually come in here and create a tab for whatever their project was and every one of them could be building from a different page and working on this at the same time. And the nice thing is they could all see each other's work while they were working on it. And you could watch it at the same time. You could actually watch it in real time for that matter. Now if I toggle back to the main level here, I've got this little arrow that has a kind of a curved and pointing backwards and uh, up. If I click on that, it takes me back out here to my main part. Now I also have in this notebook a content library. This area would be where I would put information that I want all my students to see but not be able to edit. So this would be where I'd put my syllabus and handouts and anything else that I want them to be able to open but not edit it. So they can't edit my copy of it that I have here in the notebook, but they can open it, do a save as, and then be able to save a copy of that for themselves. So this would be a good spot for those kind of things. Again, I click back to get to my main level, and now here you see all of my students, or in my notebook, this is all the people that are part of the technology staff or curriculum staff that are included in my SSISD instructional technology notebook. And you see here that I can have more students listed than I can fit across the top. But now if I go into any one of my students there, they have sections, and these sections can be created by me. So I can actually set up tabs for my students. And that's where I might put in a turn it in section, I might have a homework section, I might have a quiz section, however I want them to lay out their, their journal or their notebook. And at that point, I would also be able to toggle back and forth. Now this space here, I'm actually in Allison Martin's section. Allison's the only one that sees this besides myself. When you look back at the list of people here, when Allison's actually looking in her notebook, she wouldn't see any of these other people up here. All she would see is her area, the content library, and the collaboration space. Ben would only see Ben's section. He wouldn't see Allison's or these other people, but he would see his section, the content library, and the collaboration space. And we'll look at another video on how to set this up because this is how I would recommend that you work with students. And personally, if I'm in a secondary classroom especially, this is how I would be working with, with any of my classes if I was in the classroom today. Now you've got a little bit of an idea of how the, the what I refer to as the dynamic notebook or the class creator notebook looks compared to a basic notebook that's going to be shared on, a, on an all or nothing type of basis. You've also looked at what the online component looks like versus what the desktop component looks like. And we discussed that the desktop version is where I would recommend that you're actually working. With that said, there's one key thing here as you set up your desktop version. The first thing is some of you don't even know that you have OneNote installed on your computer yet. So if you come down here to the Start menu in the bottom left hand corner, then click All Programs, and then scroll down the page until you get to the Microsoft Office 2013 folder. Click on that, and now you see all the different components here of Office that you guys have. So you guys have the full-blown version of OneNote right here within your computer already, and all of our district computers have those. All you'd have to do is click on OneNote 2013, and the first time you do that, it's going to ask you to sign in. Often it's going to ask you to sign in with what's a personal Microsoft account. Our school accounts are business accounts, so this gets a little confusing. So if you try entering your credentials and it just doesn't seem to be taking it, just X out of that little box and you're going to do something instead. You've got two options. You can click over here, and I'm already logged in, but it would say sign in right here. And you can go ahead and try signing in with your credentials at that point. Now you notice I have two different accounts associated with my uh, OneNote file here, or my OneNote program here. I've got my school account and I've got my personal account. This is the account that I use for my personal Microsoft. This is the email that I use for that. So I went ahead and entered my personal one in first and then all I had to do was add in my business one. Now what you can do is come over here to File in the upper left hand corner, click on File, click on Open. And the first time you do this, 
Over here, you will not see this OneDrive Independent School District, the sites, Sulphur Springs Independent School District, and probably won't even see this OneDrive personal unless you've done something with it. But right down here, you'll have another button that says Add a Place. You want to click on Add a Place, and then it's going to open up a new list of options over here, one of which will be a SharePoint, and it says SharePoint something else. You're going to click on the SharePoint one, enter in your school credentials, your email address, and your, your password. And when you do that, it's going to go ahead and start opening up all of your notebooks and make them available to you right here. So even if you've used OneNote some and you haven't added that place, you want to get to where you can see these things right here. The OneDrive Sulphur Springs is basically going to be what's in your OneDrive for Business. And this Sites would be, if we were using SharePoint Sites, what's available to you there. But as long as you have these, you're going to be able to see the notebooks that you have uh, access to whether that be one that somebody shared with you and you've opened it before or one that you've created yourself. So again, to do that, we went File in the upper left-hand corner, Open, and then we scroll down the page to the button that would say Add a Place. Again, if you see these, you've already got that taken care of. That would be one of the first things I would say that you need to do. All right, you're going to have to follow up in some other videos here to see how you create the notebooks and to get a little bit more information about just how they look. But hopefully this was helpful to you in understanding the difference between the different parts of the notebooks. Thank you.